Good evening and welcome. Tonight, we will be going over the history and geography of Aiga Ilatai in Samoa. I'm so excited because Samoan history is so interesting. Um, if I hopefully remember, I'll link up in the corner there to the last area of Samoa that I covered, which was on just right over here really fascinating history and this isn't any different so let's get into it Aika Ilatai means family by the sea and that is mainly because most of Aika Ilatai is made up of little islands here a little family by the sea you can see on this map there's Apulima and Manono which is the one we're going to be talking about the most. There's also a very tiny island off the coast of Manono called Nu'ulopa. Um, let's talk about that one first. Nu'ulopa is uninhabited. It is a little tiny forested rock that was mainly used as a burial site for um, the, the important people of the day, mainly like priests and kings. Um, Manono and Apulima have a lot of interesting similarities, mainly in that there are no roads and therefore no cars. People get around on foot, just like they always have been doing since people have been living on them. Um, there are no dogs allowed on these islands and no horses. And these islands are also very interestingly self-sufficient. They grow everything they need. They don't necessarily need to import things from other countries to survive in the modern world. They've got it all, which is really, really interesting. Um, Apulima in particular, I think, is really cool. And of course, we're going to look at all of these on Google Earth in a minute. Um, Apulima, you can really tell, used to be a volcano that had collapsed and the only town on Apulima is in like the crater. It kind of like, if this is a volcano, okay, sorry, if this is a volcano, it went like, like that. So the town is over here and up here are these huge high cliffs that you can't get to on foot. Nobody, from what I can tell, from what I've read, I've tried to look, nobody's ever explored them before. We can see them from above, it's just trees and things, but how interesting that there's a part of this little tiny island that nobody has set foot on. Isn't that so cool? Aika Ilatai also has a little section here of the main island of Samoa, Upolu. Uh, the capital is over here, mostly because you can't really run a, a capital city on a little tiny island like that. There are also little towns here. I think it's Nu Manono and Nu Apolima. I might be wrong, I didn't write them down, but we'll see them on Google Earth. Uh, those are mainland towns that correspond to the islands. And they have boats that go back and forth between the islands. And the most of the population of those towns are people from Manono and Apolima who want to, um, you know, live on the more modern side of Samoa. So that is why those towns are there. I think that is so interesting. But even more interesting than that is the history of this little tiny corner of the world. So much has happened here, so let's get into it. Um, the first great chief of Samoa was named Pili. I've actually read a bunch of names of this guy, but Pili is the most common one I've Pili had many sons, and he split up the islands of Samoa among them. And he had one young daughter that was left without any land. So, and her name was Tolufale. So he gave her the islands here and told her that her job is not just to be like the chief of these islands, but to be the arbitrator. So whenever there was conflict, Anywhere on the islands between the chiefdoms here, mainly Monono was the center. Monono would be the one to deliberate between the two and, if needed, wage war. 
and uh, that they definitely did. You know, they were just meant to maintain, sticking to the book, maintain like a balance between all the tribes, but Monono wound up controlling all of them. By about 1820, they were a military powerhouse. When I talked about Aana, I talked about the Great Aana War when Monono came in and just like destroyed the area, literally and figuratively. They did a couple war crimes. They were very um, like steadfast leaders. They were in charge of everyone. They were the they were the ones in charge, right? And that lasted until all about, um, 1870, but before that, I'm getting ahead of myself. In 1836, the first missionaries arrived in Samoa from London, and the London Missionary Society based their headquarters on Monono, one because it was definitely, like, a seat of power in Samoa, and everyone would listen if they're on a Monono. And, um, also because it's right smack dab in the middle, right? Perfect place to have a headquarters. What's interesting about Samoa and Christianity, it's a very, very Christian nation, and that is because one of their former demigoddess leaders prophesied that someone would come to these islands with a brand new religion, and they, they were ordered, you need to follow that religion when this happens. So when the missionaries arrived, all the Samoans were in agreement, like, yep, this is the new religion, bring on Christianity, we are very accepting of it. And that is why Samoa is a very, very Christian nation today. 1870 is when Samoa starts getting juggled back and forth between the major powers of the world, mainly... Um, well, England in one part, but mainly Germany and the United States. It's why American Samoa exists, because the Samoa became part of the German Empire. And American Samoa became part of what was basically then the American Empire. And it got, you know, they were occupied by the Japanese, eventually became Western Samoa. Upon independence, they, they just changed their name to Samoa. Obviously, once they were on their own feet and not controlled by any other foreign entity, they had the capital at Apia here. Um, Apia, we won't get into it, but um, lots of famous things happened there in its history um, in terms of like imperial like like battles between like Germany and America. Um, so that was really like the central focus of the day. So it drifted away from Monono over onto Upolu. Um, and again, you know, the, the tribes are still there. They're still around. But um, it's, it's not quite how it was, you know. Christianity and imperialism kind of changed the cultural landscape of Samoa. So Monono is no longer like a, a huge warlord power, you know. They're just a little island with people on it. So that is the history of just this little section of Samoa. Let me pull up Google Earth. I'm going to zoom out first because I'm really zoomed in so you can see this tiny map of Samoa. Let me get my tablet here. There we go. So here's the little corner of Aika Ilatai. And here are the islands. So let's look at the mainland first. Let's see if I got those names right. Those little towns. Nope, I did not. So Apulima Uta. And uh, Mulifanu, I believe, is the, the capital of the territory. Monono Uta. I was way off. So there aren't a lot of really cool pictures, because as you can see, it's mostly just little homes and little farms and little busy areas, which is just like schools and churches and supermarkets. There isn't much to show you, but you can see all the beautiful coral off of here. Isn't that something? It's so, so beautiful. Let's head up to the islands here. So here is Monono, and you can see that there are little towns out here along the coast. Definitely not inland. That is all forested, used for growing all of their food. So I don't think there's any, like, cool pictures to show you, to be honest. And um, 
I think that's just because, you know, there's no cars, so Google can't really take pictures here, and not a lot of tourists visit this area. It's kind of hard to get to because you have to, like I said, you have to go to Manono Uta and take a boat ride to Manono to get there. Let's see. Apolima. This is really cool because there's a good 3D shot of it. So you can see this big cliff face up here. You can see the old shape of the volcano. You can see how it kind of slid out there. And this is the only town on the island. I forgot to mention that Apolima was primarily used as a fortress site for the chiefs of Monono because the only way you can land on this island is going through here. Why does this area remind me so much of Moana? It looks like that's where Moana lives, right? Isn't that so cool? A little village there. And then let's find a little tiny It's not over here, is it? No, that's just a rock. <laughs> Way out here in the ocean. I thought it was like over here somewhere. I've lost the island. <laughs> There's the main island. I've lost this little tiny island. Oh, there's not much to see there anyway. It is kind of just a rock. Nope, that's coral. I've lost it. Nu'umupa. You can see there's a really pretty beach here. The rest is just a rock. You can see a... I don't think there's a 3D. No, but it's not really 3D. Yeah, so like I said, mostly just used as a burial site because nobody lives on it. It's so, so fascinating. And I've spent a long time here on Google Earth trying to find cool things to show you. Um, it, it's just not there. Like, if I tap on this, there's no pictures. <laughs> um, I've tried looking through all the towns, and like I said, it's just little schools, supermarkets, and churches, and there aren't any pictures of them. <laughs> Beautiful shots people took of the water, but that's just water, you know? So, I'm going to leave it there for the night, but at least you've got a better view of what this place looks like. Isn't this so fascinating? Look at this beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video to be relaxing and educational. And if you enjoyed this kind of educational ASMR, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series on my channel. Tomorrow we are going to East Timor or Timor last day. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I hope that you have a very good, good, good 